Hey guys, welcome back to the Thinkorswim tutorial series. In the video today, we'll be jumping into the Thinkorswim mobile app and going through the process of placing a stop order inside of the app. Now we're gonna be doing this a few different ways. The first way is on a position we already hold, and that could be either a stock or an option, and we're just saying we wanna put a stop out along with it. The second way is gonna be on a position we don't yet own. So basically a simplified advanced order. First, we wanna buy the stock. If we're ever able to buy that stock or buy that option, we then want a stop order to go out automatically along with it. In this case, that would be a first trigger sequence or the first order triggers the second order. And finally, I'll show you how to do the exact same thing on options contracts or futures contracts, whatever you wanna do it on. And to be honest with you, it is the exact same way you do it for stock. Now jumping right into it, you can see that I'm on the positions page on my mobile app. Now, if you're not familiar with the app, this is where you can see all of your current open positions, whether they be stock, options, futures, whatever you're currently holding. Now, if you're just holding stock, you're just going to see the denotion of how many shares you're actually holding. So American Airlines, you can see I've got 100 of them. Airy, you can see I've got 100. Big, you can see I've got 200 shares. But in some cases, you see that there's no denotion of the quantity of shares. It's just got like a little arrow to the left-hand side. Now, that means I could have multiple positions and specifically options positions. So in the case of Amazon, if I were to go ahead and click on that, you're going to see that I've got five shares of Amazon in this account, as well as a short vertical call spread. I sold the 3530 bought the 3535. But when you click on that little drop down arrow, you're gonna see that those little boxes pop up to the left of those positions. Now using those boxes is how you're gonna close out your open positions in the app. Now in the case of us placing a stop, we don't necessarily wanna close this position right away, we just wanna put a stop out along with it. So in the case of Amazon, let's say I wanted to sell those five shares of Amazon if the stock ever dropped below, let's say 3100. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click on that little check mark box to the left of it and you're gonna see a new button appears down below. It's gonna say close selected. Now we're gonna go ahead and click on that, close selected, and you're gonna see a few options come up. Sell five shares of Amazon, use a stop with an OCO bracket. None of these are actually going to place the trade immediately. It's just like an order template. It's just used to help you along. Now in our case, since we are gonna use a stop, we'll use the template with a stop, and we're gonna go ahead and say close selected. Now this is an order ticket for those five shares of Amazon. You can see that my order type defaulted to a stop order, which is perfect, exactly what we wanted. You can see the order is to sell all five shares of Amazon. Let's say I only wanted to do it on three of those shares. We'll go ahead and change that to three. We're gonna leave the stop type as standard. If you wanted to change that, you can click on the little arrow to the right of it, and you're gonna see it switches to the ask. Now, all this is saying is what price do you wanna go off of when you say it crosses below, in our case, 3,100? Do you want it to trigger the stop when the ask crosses below 3,100? Or do you want the stop to activate if the ask crosses below 3100 or the last traded price crosses below 3100? That would be standard. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it on standard. And we're gonna change the stop activation price, which currently is just the current price for Amazon in this case, 3335. We're gonna go ahead and change that by clicking on it and typing in 3100. Now we're almost done in this case. The only thing we're going to slightly change is change the time in force to good until canceled. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna ask, why aren't you gonna use extended or GTC EXT so it includes the pre and post market? Now that's a great question, but remember, you cannot use stops in the after hours. Stops will not be active, they will not work, you have no protection in the after hours. The only thing we can use is either day or GTC. Now in my case, I always wanna get stopped out if it ever goes below 3100, so I'm gonna make this good until canceled. If it doesn't happen today, it's gonna to go out again tomorrow. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, it's gonna to go out the next day and hopefully it never fills. I want Amazon to go back up. I don't want it to continue dropping. Now, we don't have to do anything else with the rest of these little buttons down here. All we have to do is hit review. We're gonna get a little order confirmation saying, are you sure you wanna place this trade? Now, in my case, I don't wanna place it, but if I did, I would hit that big send button in the upper right-hand corner. In my case, I'm gonna get out of this hitting edit and canceling the order. But that is how you place a stop on a position you already hold. You're gonna to come to the positions page. You're gonna find the position you wanna put a stop on. Click on that little check mark box to the left of it, close selected, and simply adjust the order type to a stop if you need to, change the activation price, and send the order out there. Nothing too crazy. Now the next one is going to be a little bit trickier, and that's placing a stop on a position you don't even own yet. Now in my case, I don't own any shares of Netflix, but let's go ahead and take a look saying if I wanted to buy the shares, and let's say I wanted to buy them at a much lower price than they are currently. Let's first pull up Netflix. And we can see it's currently $573.14 a share. Let's say I only wanted to buy Netflix if it went down to $550. If that ever happened, I wanted a stop to go out automatically along with it to get me out if it ever dropped below $545, $5 below that. 
So what we need to do first is actually put in a buy order. And in my case, I said I only wanted to buy it if it went down to 550 in this case. So as you can see, that'll be a limit order to buy one share of Netflix at 550. I'm also gonna make that good until canceled. And where it gets a little tricky is we have to create an advance order. So this order triggers the next order to go out there, which is gonna be our stop. Now to do that on an iPhone, you're just gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on create an advance order. From there, you can see it defaults to a first triggers OC order. And to be honest with you, you can use this. We could simply add an order right here, or we could change this from first triggers OCO, and we could select first triggers sequence. Now, first trigger sequence simply means that the first order is gonna trigger the second order. So the second order will not go out there until the first order fills. Now, in our case, our first order was to buy the shares of Netflix first, to buy those shares if it ever drops down to 550. Now, if that order ever fills, we wanna change this order. We wanna make it a stop. And I believe I said 545, $5 below where we fill. And we'll also make this order good until canceled. We'll go back to the group and that's it. We would just need to review the order and you can read it off right there. It says our first order is to buy one share of Netflix at 550. If that order were to fill, a stop would go out there at 545. The only thing we'd have to do is go ahead and hit send in the upper right hand corner to submit the trade and that would be it. Now, in our case, we're not going to do that. We'll, again, edit out of here, cancel it outright. And I think you guys can see how easy it is to place a stop in the app. It's nothing crazy. And some of you guys might also ask about placing trailing stops or stop limits, anything like that. And it's basically exactly the same. If we were to pull up a sell order here, the only thing you would need to change is the order type itself, just like before. Now, in our previous examples, we were using a simple stop, and that's just one little tap to the right. Using a stop limit order would be one more tap to the right. And the only thing that does is give you access to the limit price. So this order type basically exactly the same as the stop market order, except instead of a market order going out there, a limit order goes out there. And you also have access to a trailing stop. And just like before, you would just put in the trailing stop amount down here below where it says 10 cents. You could also make it a tick amount or a percentage amount if you wanted to. And I will say the only thing you're not really gonna have access to in here is a trailing stop limit order. Not that you're ever really gonna need it, but I will preface that you don't have access to it in here. Now, finally, we'll also go through how to do this on a options contract, and we'll do it on an option contract we currently hold. So let's go back to the positions page. We're gonna go ahead and uncheck those Amazon shares, and let's look at a position that's going against me. Let's go ahead and open these Coinbase options. You can see that I sold two of the 245 puts. Now, this one's a little bit confusing, because remember, I sold these 245 puts, so the price increasing on these options is bad for me. So my buy stop is gonna be above the price that it currently is. So in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the little check mark box to the left of that option. Just like before, you've got new buttons pop up. Now in this case, you've got a button that says roll selected as well as close selected. Now in today's video, we're not gonna talk about rolling. We're just gonna hit that close selected button. And from here, you can see that it defaults to a buy limit order. Now in my case, like I said before, I wanted this to be a stop. So we're gonna change this from a limit order to a stop. And currently you can see it defaults to the current price, $8.70. But let's say I only wanted to buy it back if it went up to, let's say 10 bucks. So we'll go ahead and throw 10 in there. And we'll change this time and force from day to good till canceled. So I am now saying I wanna buy back those 245 puts if they're ever trading for $10 or more. Basically, I don't wanna lose any more money beyond $10. Just like in all the previous examples, I would just review the order, make sure everything looks right, and then hit send if I actually wanted to submit this. Now doing this on spreads, doing it on futures contracts, anything, it's all exactly the same. And I promise you, once you do it a few times, you're gonna say, man, this is crazy easy. Now, if you guys do have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. If I miss anything, leave it down below and I'll try and answer all of them as best I can. If you guys did find this video helpful though in some way, please hit that like button. You'd be surprised how much it helps me out. And if you guys would like to watch any other videos on Thinkorswim or on the Thinkorswim mobile app, check out some of my playlists. There's a lot of good info in there for you. But as always, I hope you guys make some money this week and I'll catch you all in the next video.